Welcome to the Young Kings Wrestling Podcast. TC Fontaine, Malik Ricks, Reek Havoc. We got a special guest in the building here, man. Welcome. Uh, you guys may know him from his time in WWE and ECW, as well as Impact Wrestling. Uh, the current NWA television champion, we got the Pope Elijah Burke. Welcome aboard, man. How you doing this afternoon? Everything's good, as I like to say in the hood. That's how we kind of do it back where I'm from. But all is well. How you boys doing over there? Man, it's another Sunday. You know, we watching some football. Uh, my, my team lost, so <laughs> I'm trying to get through the day. Well, certainly, we're not going to even hop on that front and talk about teams, you know, when it comes to Jacksonville Jaguars. I just don't know anymore. That's why your boy, <laughs> miss, that's why your boy missed Peyton, man. That's why I miss Peyton, man, and, and, and him doing his thing in the Broncos, man. When he left, took a little bit of my fandom with him. And hey, that's, how, that's how it always goes. Tom, Tom Brady left, and so it's, I don't know, I'm on the fence now. <laughs> <laughs> true that, true that. Wow. Hey, man, so uh, welcome aboard, man. So uh, this past month, uh, you had made your return to pay-per-view, a couple appearances at UWN Primetime Live. Uh, one of those saw you win uh, the NWA Television Championship. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. And uh, also, now that you're champion, uh, what's the likelihood of, of you versus Cody possibly at AEW? Because uh, everybody wants to see that. Well, yeah, I, I, I see that's pretty much a hot topic that everybody is – uh, talking about, you know, I see it multiple times daily or so, you know, um, whenever I am on social media or whatnot. Um, I don't know the likelihood of that. Uh, we obviously know that the NWA has been working uh, during this pandemic uh, with AEW, and that's just Billy Corgan being smart and keeping his, his product out in front of the fans during um, our time on hiatus. So when things return, um, people will be aware of the NWA. Uh, again, a lot of people are asking the question about uh, the possibility of Pope versus Cody, being that they have their own TV title, the TNT title and the NWA. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where, uh, how that happens or whatnot. Is it a possibility? Certainly uh, that is. And we'll just have to wait to see how things play out, particularly mm -hmm. speaking when it comes to that. For sure, man. It seems like a no-brainer to me, you know, being in Jacksonville. That's where they're doing their filming. So uh, I think we might have to get a, a, a trend going. And, and True, get you, yeah. Get you on, I'm get you on Dynamite, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and last time we saw you on a national level prior to the pandemic was on NWA Power. Uh, what was your take on that studio audience format? And uh, you think we'll see a return anytime soon? Yeah, well, again, we're working on the return for NWA Power. And um, I do see us returning in 2021. It's just a matter of uh, us as a country getting some sort of hold, if you will, on the pandemic and the handling of it. And, and you know, it it's just comes down to that. Uh, particularly speaking, the pandemic, it just comes down to uh, where we're at, you know, going into 2021 and, and how bad things are or how good things are. And that will determine because with the studio format, uh, NWA Power is, is running out of a contract in studio. So if the studios are not allowing any type of for, formation or ensembles of people in one place, then that will prohibit us from having the fans back. But there is talk of us moving forward, even if there are no fans in attendance as well. So uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. But certainly I love the studio audience. Um, it was me sitting back and taking a look at NWA Power and digging that whole side up. It was an old school side up, old school feel with a new school attitude. Uh, and, and, and when, you know, just watching NWA power being on the outside looking in, I'm, I'm going, man, this is great. It took me back, you know, Pope back to his childhood and, and everything that NWA was, you know, so it's pretty cool. And, and, and I hope we get back to the formality uh, uh, of that whole setup soon. Awesome. Awesome, man. Hey, listen, it's, it's a man wreak havoc over here. Question, uh, 
we see how important uh, factions are in the wrestling business today. Uh, you know, you are part of one way back with the new breed in ECW. Wait, uh, wait, wait a minute. You say important. Talk to Pope for a second. Na- name an important <laughs> faction. Now, please don't say Dark Order. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but oh, I no. <laughs> my, my the question was oh, okay. how you feel about them growing more and more nowadays. Because, I mean, we, we see more popping up every day, like the Inner Circle, Dark Order, and the Hurt Business yeah. now, Retribution. Yeah. How do you feel about them, the, the level to which they're growing nowadays? Um, it's, it, it would be equivalent to being on a beachfront and um, setting up shops selling your own hot dogs. Uh, not many stand out. You know, it's like going to a fair you can, or, or a, a carnival. You can walk all the way around and say you want to get you an Italian sausage dog. All of them are going to be the exact same. None is going to stand above the other. Uh, so what is Pope saying? Well, I, I, everything that you just named, um, there's not really one that stands above the other in Pope's opinion. Now, if you want to talk about uh, the actual obvious uh, of being different, that would be the hurt business because it's all black. But, so, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's folk that, you know, look like them young kings. You understand what Pope is saying? Um, but other than that, there, there's no turning of the heads in Pope's opinion. There's no, uh, you know, there is no horseman. You know, there, there, there is, you know, no NWO. There is no DX type level factions in this era right now. Could that change? Could it go on to be more, you know, could the inner circle go on and, and, and uh, gravitate to that type of stardom? Sure. You know, but none of that is at that level uh, at this current time. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other thing too, real quick, uh, we saw recently the, the New Day got split up in the draft. I know you're close with them boys over there. How'd you feel about that, man? Um, well, you know, um, it, it the, the New Day will always hang around uh, and, and always be something in the WWE because it's all about uh, the contributing factor and the contributing factor is for years, the new day has been one of the top merchandise movers. So, so, you know, they're not going to disband them totally as we have seen completely, but yet them doing what they're doing to separate Big E being that they want to push Big E or the talk has been pushing them and, and, and giving him a singles run. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, uh, it's time for Big E to want to carve his own path and, and um, th- that's going to be the only way to do it. Uh, I, I personally thought they, they'd be together until the actual, you know, to the actual end. And, and being that it's WWE, they can always come back together. You're talking mm-hmm. about a draft. You're talking about a draft that's 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 only the draft and in effect operate as a draft for the first couple of weeks to a month. And then the next thing you know, you'll start seeing the changes happen and people appearing on two program side. But you know, so yep. it, it never lasts. It never lasts. Yep, that's true. Well, that's, that's what he's talking to Pope, Dad, because Pope speaks truth. You know, that's I'm always I'm going to always spit that knowledge like I do over on Post Point of View, my very own podcast. I'm just going to speak the obvious truth. And the, the draft is never the draft. The draft is only a, a draft the day of and, and, and the weeks that follow. But after that, you'll start seeing, you know, characters appear on, on both programming and, and somebody will get a buy option or they'll make a rule that champions can appear. You know, tra- it's, it's just, you know, it's just to create uh, interest at that very moment in time to move the numbers for the show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw we saw people from SmackDown show up on Raw the next week after the draft a couple weeks ago. Right. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's been a right. hot-button topic over here, man. They just... They don't respect it. So it's like, what's the no. point? Yeah, exactly. And it's always been that way. Uh, you know, they tried it one time, you know, back when I was there and, and it pretty much held this course, you know, for a little while. But after that, you know, things go back because you got to hit the panic button. If things aren't working on one side uh, or one is doing obvious better than the other, uh, they're going to make those changes. And, and then the rule book goes out the window. The draft is nothing more than an angle. 
the draft is nothing more than an angle. For sure. That's right. That's right. The Pope is Malik. Um, both WWE and TNA highlighted your background uh, with boxing. Um, I just wanted to know, who are some of your favorite boxers today? And uh, did you watch last night's fight? You know, I missed it. Uh, I, I, I missed it. I'm not going to even lie. Um, a lot of times I find myself only, you know, going to make sure I watch something uh if it's someone who I just really, really dig, you know, or, or if it's something of uh, of major importance, you know, same with the UFC, uh, you know, Floyd is coming back to do something like when he and Pacquiao were doing their thing, you know, I'm always I'm there to watch that type of stuff, but I I don't I don't go out of my way to really um, to make sure I catch a fight, uh, just like I don't go out of my way to make sure I catch a pay per view of wrestling. Um, these days, unless there's something major uh, that is happening, then then I go ahead and I do that. Uh, for instance, you know, because the, you know I was watching these guys when I was coming up, so I really want to see what's going to happen during this quote unquote exhibition with um, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. Roy Jones Jr. Oh, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, I really want to see you know 50 year old Tyson who has gotten in tremendous shape. I want to see Roy Jones who is considered pound for pound. Uh, one of the greatest at that time and certainly of all time. So uh, I want to know if they're just BSing us or I want to know if things going to get heated in there. So I really want to check that out. Yeah. Do, would you ever see yourself doing something like that? Because they got, you know, NBA star uh, Nate Robinson is going to be in there. He's going to be fighting YouTuber Jake oh. Paul. Like if somebody came to you with that, would you be willing to get back in the ring one more time? Yes, for for, for certain reasons. Yes, I, I, I actually would. So um, if it was... Uh, if it was possibly, uh, actually, I gave a, I gave a little shout out there to uh, Jake Paul, I believe, uh, you know, because he was trying to find somebody. I certainly go in there and knock him out. Uh, and um, if if CM Punk wanted to give his chance to be a legit, uh, well, not legit because we've seen what happened with him. But I certainly, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I certainly step back. Set it up. <laughs> yeah, I certainly step back in for that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. A prime, a prime. We gotta, we gotta get that to train now. <laughs> a prime <laughs> example of what happens when you buy your own hype as a dog on entertainer and, and 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 being the the best in the world, and you go into a real world where you never had a fight, and you see what happens. But um, I support him, and I I, I I certainly supported him throughout that process, because um, anytime you go out there to accomplish your dream, or, or search something. Uh, in search of something that you want to obtain, I'm all for that. So I don't care about the fact that he got his butt, you know, beat and pounded into the ground and came out looking like, you know, Martin did on that episode when he went against that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember that episode? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Tommy man. Hearns busted him up. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. man. So that's like, geez, you know, I kind of started feeling bad for the for the guy every time he got in there and in the octagon, you know, it's like, hey, man, you just can't believe you're on hype, you know, uh, and, and that's how I feel about some of the guys uh, in this business. You know, I've, I've been in the business for a while, but the reason you don't see these guys throwing throwing punches that look like punches and all of them stick to the forearms and the chops, they become big, bad guys once they're inside the square circle of entertainment. But outside of that, you know, uh, the, 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 you 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 come on the street. You walk down my street. You're in the hood. You know, and, and you you ain't gonna be that bad guy that you claim to be when you're inside the ring. A lot of those guys have never been in a real fight in their life, and it kind of shows when you're watching. You know what goes on in the product today. For sure, man. So, uh, you know, you as we mentioned at the top of the, of the interview, man. You you were in WWE and Impact. Uh, you're in NWA now. So across your career, uh, you got to work with some notable guys like uh, Kurt Angle, Ric Flair, Rey Mysterio, among others. Uh, what's a key piece of advice that you learned early on that you've been able to carry out throughout your career? Oh, man. One is never stop learning. Uh, never stop learning. Never stop adap adapting. Um, always be keen to listen. Um, to listen. That's how you learn is to listen. Um, never know it all. And... Um, Always study the greats. Um, you have to you have to dedicate your your time, like 
dedicate your time to your craft. And so even, even today, I never stop learning. I don't watch uh, wrestling to enjoy it. I watch it to learn, you know, whether that's me seeing things that shouldn't be or seeing how things could be better. You know, that's what I'm doing in my head every time I'm watching something. You know, this should have happened. That should have happened. Why did this happen? Does this make sense? Where's the psychology? So that's the type of stuff I learned from being under those guys, the Ric Flair, and obviously the Dusty when it comes to the promos. Uh, you know, working with Arn, Fit, Finley, Dean Malenko, uh, those are some of my, my agents that I enjoy being around. So that's the type of stuff I learned. Indeed. Now, how was your time in uh, OVW? Like, who was down there with you? How was it training down there? Uh, OVW was great. I'm learning on the Jim Cornette and Danny Davis, you can't ask for more there, man. Um, in the ring, um, our, our trainers were, you know, Al Snow, Lance Storm, you know, and we always had the agents to come down there as well uh, uh, from WWE. But being there was great. It was a great time. It taught the taught, – me the respect that I have for the business uh, because I had to go in there. I had to earn everything that I've uh, obtained. And um, I think the biggest thing coming out of OBW was just to respect, respect to the business. Um, you know, a lot of guys do not have that today. You know, when a guy who's, who, who's made money and drawn money in his business can walk into a locker room and, and the guys that have never made money don't even have the common sense to get up and introduce themselves or ask for advice, you know, uh, for their matches, you know, that stuff would have never happened back, you know, during the time when I was in OVW, you know, I brought Mick Foley there one time followed an appearance uh, that we both read like a comic, uh, a zombie con or something like that in Louisville. And, you know, hey, you're going to go over to, uh, to OVW, went to OVW. And, you know, I just had to kind of like give everybody, you know, the kids that was there, like, hey, y'all gather around. You know, it's Nick. Freaking pick his brain. Ask him question after question right. if you guys, yep. you know, like, and, and, I, and right, I understand right, right. a lot of people be timid or whatnot. You know, a lot of guys don't want to bother me when I'm at shows, but it's like, yo, this is what I'm here for. I'm not, I, you can't do nothing for me. I'm not here for, you know, to get myself over. I'm, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do for me. Like, use me while I'm here. That's why I'm here. So that's what I, I learned, man. I'm an OVW. It's just to, to respect the business and half of the stupid stuff that you see. And yes, I say stupid. That goes on on the shows today. Uh, you'll never see your boy involved in, in some of that malarkey. Shout out to Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> what What is one of your favorite companies to work for out of, you know, you, WWE, TNA, now you in the TNA is my favorite. Really? Well, NWA is my favorite now after TNA, but I mean, we, <laughs> you know, but, but uh, uh, no, I, I mean, it, uh, my favorite was TNA when I got there, obviously for a lot of reasons. And it's kind of like transferred over, you know, as far as the, what I got from being in TNA, the time that I had there, uh, Pope is Pope. Pope gets to be Pope. Nobody knows Pope like Pope. And what I loved about my time, again, every, every place was great. Uh, as far as what it did for me in different ways. WWE, I made a ton of money. I still got today. You know, TNA, I made a ton of money. You know, uh, and, and I also, the difference between TNA and um, WWE was just the mere fact that I, this Russo would say, Pope, 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 what's going on, Pope? <laughs> you, know, you know, what are we doing today? What are we saying today, Pope? Come on, tell me. I'm like, Vince, what do you mean what's going on? I mean, you're in charge. Yeah, but I'm, listen, bro, bro, listen. I'm a I'm a 40-something-year-old <laughs> Italian, bro, okay? I'm a 40-something-year-old <laughs> Italian. I can't write for Pope. I don't know what Pope would say. So so you just do you, Pope. You, you tell me what you want to do, bro. And that was my time at TNA. Never had a promo script to fuck me. Never was told what to say. Just tell me the scenario, what angle I'm in, and Pope takes it from there. Same thing you see today when I'm, when I'm talking on the microphone. Same thing you saw at NWA Power. It's just Pope being Pope. You give me a microphone. Let me do what I'm going to do. Put me in the ring. Let me tell the story. Cool, man. Hey, Pope, we've been going on this for a little bit now. And I, I just, I got to ask you from, you know, your perspective, somebody that's in the business, we see this 
it's particularly from AEW, this oversaturation of tag team wrestling, you know, and then you look at WWE, they barely have a tag team division at all. Like for you, how much is too much for tag team wrestling? We lose them. Yeah, you saw it. I don't know. I think we lost him. Huh? <laughs> oh, he's on mute. He on mute. Uh, <laughs> who's on? Am I? I was on mute. You off mute now? Yeah, yeah, now you off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 I apologize. <laughs> hey, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know much about it. My apologies. Oh no, you all good. <laughs> so, so the question was about tag team wrestling, and yeah. I think. I think, you know, you got to find the right medium for everything. And um, AEW has a slew of talent that are at their, uh, you know, using when they want to. And I think they try to get everybody on. And thus you see all the tag team action, four man, eight man, you know, six man. And so be it. Uh, tag team wrestling is great when uh, when done right. Uh, tag team wrestling can be great if done right. Uh, obviously, you know, thus is the his history of the road warriors and rock and roll and midnight. Nobody utilized tag teams better than NWA and WCW back mm-hmm. in the day. This has never really been, Vince McMahon has never really been a tag team guy because it's about the money. It's about the money. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So that that that's that's Vince's take on things. Why would I pay two guys when I could pay one? Right. So um, so so that that's Vince's take on that. But I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I do think it's it can be overdone a lot, uh, as you said in AEW, but. I think the bottom line at this point, especially during this pandemic, is just trying to get all the boys work. Mm-hmm. Indeed, man. Uh, and so, uh, you know, those that are familiar with your career in WWE, uh, you competed at WrestleMania 23 uh, as part of the, the New Breed versus the ECW Originals. Uh, me personally, I was about 14, 15 at that time, and I, I enjoyed uh, the storyline with the new breed and uh, and CM Punk trying to infiltrate, but then it kind of got thrown out after a couple weeks. Uh, were there bigger plans for that? And uh, also, can you confirm? Because uh, I, I my memory's a little shoddy, but was Dusty Rose involved with ECW at that time as well? Yeah, well, Dusty Rose was involved uh, back as a backstage producer. Period. So he didn't. Uh, if you're meaning like, did he have the input and in writing? When it came to ECW, uh, no, not 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 really. Not you know he was up there. It's a it's, it's a boardroom, so everybody's uh-huh. in there when decisions are being made. But he wasn't one of the main writers uh, during that time. One of the main writers was Dave Lagana, and I think he was the head writer at that time specifically. Dave Lagana, who was doing the writing for NWA Power as well. So uh, um, no, I, I don't. The the only thing for uh, CM Punk and the whole new breed angle was simply for CM Punk and myself. That that's that's all that was about. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the, the angle itself was for a new generation to take on the old generation of ECW, but the inclusion of Punk was to help get Punk over, obviously, as the top babyface, and also to set up the feud which would come to be between myself and CM Punk. Yeah, like man, they, I feel like they rushed it. I, I was so into it. He, he joins and he's out of it the next week, and it just yeah, yeah that that yeah. um that that was uh I, I think there were there were plans for that to extend. I think it just got dropped, um, and the reason I think it got dropped was because they they had to make room for uh, WrestleMania that was mm-hmm. coming up, and so obviously they they couldn't have Punk involved in that. So they had to find a, a place to fit Punk. And that will obviously be for the Money in the Bank match that they were having. I think, you know, the first or second Money in the Bank, whatever it was. But that's all that was about. So it was like, we have to make moves now 
to set him up to be in his match. And then we got to make room to get one of the other originals from ECW into the matchup at WrestleMania. So it will be, you know, actually the new breed versus the originals and not the new breed versus the originals and CM Punk or whatever the case may be. They wasn't going to t- turn him heel because he was a, uh, CM Punk was a hot merchandise mover with those darn hands on the shirt. Yeah. All of the, yeah. the goth. Yeah, so they weren't going to turn him heel. Yeah, so it's just another case of a uh, car subject to change, it sounds like. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> For sure, man. All right, uh, so uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, Love Alive Charity. Uh, you started the foundation back in 2012 in your hometown of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, just tell us a little bit about that and uh, and also let folks know where they can donate. I appreciate that. First thing I want to do is thank you guys for mentioning the Love Love Alive charity and thank you also for donating to our cause. We appreciate that and we don't take that for granted. Uh, The Love Alive charity is basically, you know, as you say, started in 2012, a movement of sorts. Uh, You know, that old saying, there's a saying that they they, they say about Pope. They say what? Pope is what? Pope is what? Pope is... What's, what's the terminology they say? What What's that chant that they say? Pope is pimping, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Stay with me here. Good Lord. I know oh, we're talking man. Elijah. Uh, my, 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 T, my TNA is, uh, is not up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... A little bit. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I started something called the Pimp Movement, P-I-M-P, at the time. I, I you know, while I, I, I didn't I didn't come up with that, the fans did, Pope is Pimping, so I can't take credit for that. They came up with that from the moment I walked out on that TNA pay-per-view and got in that big bird cage, that red bird cage, whatever it was called. Uh, so <laughs> I remember that now. I remember. Yeah, I call it a bird Coming cage. back. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, um, being who I am and, and, you know, I took that and I didn't want, I didn't want, I have so many, especially, uh, younger fans and stuff, and I don't want them to have that somewhat negative connotation, um, associated per se with their idea of me. So I took PIMP and changed it into positively influencing many people. Mm-hmm. And that was my movement. That was the term for if you want to say Pope is pimping, then that's what Pope do. I positively influence many people. And um I just I I decided, man, as a kid, I will always go go around my town and I would see uh homelessness. And as I became an officer same thing the homelessness just multiplied and so when I got to a point to where I was able to do something to give back to the community of Jacksonville Florida I started the Love Alive charity so Love Alive charity is over at love-alive.org we deal with the homelessness disadvantaged uh, community as well as you know families that are living in shelters, women that are in the battered shelter with their, their kids. And um, our event, our annual event is coming up on January 9th, 2021, um, provided everything goes accordingly. And uh, what we do is, man, we clothe the commu- homeless and in the community. We feed them. We give the kids book bags that are filled with essentials for them to achieve academic success. We got hygiene products for everybody, including the feminine needs uh, for the for the women that are on the streets and whatnot. So we just try to give everything that we can while we can, hence the word love, alive. And when we feed them, we don't just feed them uh, out of a bag, out of a soup kitchen. We don't just feed them peanut butter and jelly or cold cuts. We feed them directly out of Burger King. So we work hand in hand with Burger King to bring out hot meals and we give it to them right on the spot. And um, that's something I take much pride in to give people who aren't able to enjoy what we enjoy on a regular basis. And if we're tired of enjoying it and we don't feel like finishing that value meal, we just throw it away. That's what I do. I get. I want to make sure they have and 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 uh, we give them something that we oftentimes takes for granted. So again, guys, that's love dash alive dot org, and you can follow Love Alive Charity on Twitter at the same name, the Love Alive Charity, as well as follow on Twitter at Love Alive Inc. So thank you guys again for that. Uh, thank you, man, and many blessings are sure to come your way for what you're doing out here for your people. 
I appreciate that. That's how I know I'm talking to some young kings when you say stuff For like sure. that. I know, you're <laughs> your brother. I know you know where I'm coming from. Oh, you already, already, man. All right, uh, we just gonna close it out, man. We we want to thank you for for taking the time out your day to to come in here and uh, and join us. Uh, where can the people find you at on social media? Uh, well, you know that's a good question as well because I was wondering if you were going to find me because when twenty two minutes came out to four o'clock and you and I wasn't talking, I said, "Oh, the hell, what's going on?" But uh, <laughs> maybe you need to know what I'm about to tell you, but I know you know already. Guys, you can follow your boy Pope at the Black Pope, D-A Black Pope on Instagram as well as Twitter. You can also follow me at our, our, on Facebook, facebook.com slash Elijah Burke. And you can check out your boy's channel on YouTube, Pope TV, the number four and the letter U. Pope TV, number four, letter U, man. And of course, your boy's going to be popping back up here on Primetime Live real soon. Got some stuff that I'm about to reveal. Also, guys, go check out Pope new t-shirt, limited edition. Once the production stops, they will not be made again. A cool album cover t-shirt, man, to commemorate your boy winning the NWA World's Television Championship title. So, uh, Hey, that's what's up. I appreciate I appreciate you guys, man, taking the time um, to give me some of your time and us to just converge with one another and do what we do. Awesome, man. Yes, this has been uh, the Pope Elijah Burke on the Young Kings Wrestling Podcast. We out of here, yo. Go, go. <laughs>